I just want to welcome everyone tonight on behalf of Southwestern North Carolina Fellowship of Christian Athletes. My name is BJ Lauder and I'm an area rep for Southwestern North Carolina FCA. We have a wonderful lineup of area volleyball personalities doing volleyball drills for you and sharing their favorite Bible verses. I hope you get a lot out of this. God bless everyone. Hi, my name is Sue Moon. I'm the head volleyball coach at North Henderson High School, and I'm honored to talk to you today about one of our favorite drills. It's called bonsai. It's competitive, it's conditioning, it's fast paced. Our girls love it. We put our girls in groups of three. They line up in the one zone, and then the coach is on the box. And you need to have lots of shaggers, someone handing the coach volleyballs. You have two targets. It goes pretty fast, so you need to have the ball cart ready but the player is gonna play six balls and then serve. First ball, coach hits a hard shot down the line, play it up to target. Second ball is a tip, play it to target. Third ball, you throw it nice and high, they set the ball outside. Then they have to turn and run, it's pursuit, just up to the middle of the court. Fifth ball is hard cross, swing, hit it hard at them. And six is a tip, cross tip. Once they finish that rotation, you give them a ball, they go back to the service line, they serve one in. Next man up, as soon as that man finishes with the cross tip, you've got a new player coming in. So it's fast pace, even for the coaches. So it's a great drill for us, and we love it. It's called bonsai. I also get to share with you one of my favorite Bible verses. I'm currently reading a book called Love Does. It's by Bob Goff, and it's about building an incredible life during ordinary times. And his his main point is that our life is what we love. And um, I like that philosophy. You know, in, in one of his chapters, he talks about that, you know, for a long time he thought that God wanted him to be just like everybody else. There was a certain way God wanted his Christians. And what he found out is that God, in our special relationships with Jesus Christ, doesn't want us to be typical. And I love that. And it kind of fits in with my favorite Bible verse, which is 2 Timothy 1.7, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. And I like that. Uh, Paul is writing to Timothy, and in this whole chapter, he's talking about how we use our faith to find courage during difficult times. So we definitely are in difficult times, and I hope that you have the courage and a relationship with Jesus Christ to help you get through that. Hope you have a blessed day. Hey guys, I'm Sydney and I was an athlete at UGA. I was on the volleyball team. Um, so, hey all you volleyballers out there. I've got my special assistant over here, my fiance. He is gonna be helping me run this super easy drill. My coach always stressed um, that the basics are so important. And since we're at home right now, like let's be as basic and as simple as you can get. All you need is a ball and it should be pumped up but this is a little flat, so um, you'll have to get a ball that's pumped up. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys a quick drill. My coach was a gold, me gold medal squared. That's like the um, system that we ran. So it might be a little bit different for some of you that aren't used to this, but I promise you this is the best of the best. This is what the Olympians use. Um, and so it took a while for me to adapt to it, but that's what I'm going to teach you guys today, all about the basics. So what we're going to do is Charlie's going to stand over there and he's just going to toss me the ball. Super simple. What I want my stance to be is my legs locked and loaded, ready to move side to side, but I also want my arms to be nice and relaxed and I want my chest to be high. If I'm like this, I'm going here, my platform's here, it's shooting off. It's going to be way too short for my setter to get to. So what I'm practicing today, nice and relaxed arms. Put my hands together just like this, thumbs together. Very simple, I want a nice and flat platform so the ball can just bounce right off and go nice and high. So here we go. So I want 
want my platform to do all the work. I don't want to be bending with my knees. Obviously, I'm going to have to adjust if the toss isn't straight on, but I, <laughs> but I, <laughs> but I want the ball to go nice and hot over my setter's head. My coach always said 10 by 20, so you want it 10 feet off the net and 20 feet high, so then you can have all three options for the setter. So this drill is super, super simple. All you need is a ball and somebody to toss you a volleyball. <laughs> so like I said, nice and relaxed stance. You want your arms to be relaxed, ready to move, chest high, and all the work is with your platform. Don't do anything with your legs. So guys, now I get to talk about the Lord. Okay, so my favorite verse um, in volleyball was be still and know that I am God. I just thought that as an athlete um, on the court or whatever your playing field is, it can get really chaotic and there's a lot of pressure going on. And I think there's so many great Bible verses out there and it's really what um, is intentional to your heart and what really speaks truth to you. But I chose be still and know that I am God because, what? Because I just wanted to um, be still in the moment and realize that this was for his glory and not my own. And that was the purpose of the sport. I am a vessel. Um, I am his vessel first, his disciple first. My goal was not to be the, my goal was to be the best volleyball player, but not for myself. It was for him and to give him glory. So thanks for tuning in. And I hope that um, somebody around your house can help you become a better Christ follower and a better athlete today. Hi, I'm Sabrina Cairns and I'm the volleyball coach here at East Henderson High School. I would like to give BJ a shout out for giving me this opportunity to share one of our favorite drills with you, along with sharing one of my favorite Bible verses that not only speak to me during season, but also speaks to me in life in general. So let me start off with my favorite drill, which is the six touch drill. Um, this six touch drill covers a defensive portion of practice and also a conditioning. But at the same time, it also takes the conditioning part out of the girls' minds that this is what we're really doing. But we're also focused on some volleyball skills during that time as well. So therefore, as a coach, I stand at the net on the opposite side of the court, um, getting ready to attack those girls. And uh, there's a group of three that are getting ready to obviously take me on. Um, so what I'd like to start is the first girl will jump on. I will hit to position one, which is a line ball, and it comes down the line. They will pass that to target. They move to position two, which will be a tip from the coach. Then they move to position three, which will be a slight toss just right over the net to where they will set to the target. Then they will pursue ball number four off the court, which is an out of system ball. And I just request that they just put it back into a play position for us to be able to get it. Then they need to race to position five, which is a cross court kill, along with position six, which is also a cross court tip. So we go through about three times. All these balls I'm hitting at them are a rapid fire pace. I've got girls that are constantly handing me the balls, and then I've also got girls around just shagging the balls. So this is a defensive drill that we enjoy. My girls love it, they crave the challenge. And they always ask every day, are we doing this drill? So it's a wonderful drill to, um, you know, kind of get started and do defensive and conditioning. So therefore, moving on to my favorite verse, as a coach, we always face a lot of negativity from outside forces. And also in life, we face those things. And I would just like to kind of share my favorite Bible verse that helps get me through those times, which is Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I think with that promise, we can always take away that God is with us no matter what we go through. Even during this tough time that we're going through, not only personally, but as a nation and as worldwide, that, you know, God has us through all this. And even during season, when things get hard and they get tough and you kind of get into those little slumps at some point during the season, you know, God's got you. God has your back. And that is one thing that I can definitely take away and be blessed and have faith in knowing that 
God has me covered no matter what. So hopefully this will help you out and hope to see you guys soon this season. Thank you. Hey, Excel family, it's Coach Donna. Coming to you today, we're gonna to teach you a couple drills, and then I wanna share a little verse with you to help you get through this time where we're not together. So with me today is Coach Bailey. Coach Lindsay's behind the camera today. She just gave me the wink, so we're ready to go. So this drill right here, you can do at home. It's called ball control using a hula hoop. So what Coach Bailey's gonna do, she's gonna hit the ball, practice on everything that we teach you fundamentally, transferring your weight, keeping that left foot forward, keeping your hand high as you finish. She's gonna hit some balls into the hula hoop. So let's see how accurate Coach Bailey is. It's been a while. So the second portion of this drill we're gonna teach you today is a defensive drill. So we're gonna have one person hitting into the hula hoop just like you were. You're trying to spot the middle of the hula hoop with your hit. But the one that's behind the hula hoop is now gonna start inside. She's gonna to move to the back of the hula hoop and defensively she's gonna guard that spot. So this is gonna look really good with her playing defense. Remember our posture. Remember how we want you to look defensively. You did everything so you're reaching out to pick up that hoop. And the last series of this is basically our drop and drive series with the hula hoop this time. So what we're going to do is Coach Bailey's going to start with the hula hoop in her hands. And as she sees the ball coming toward her, we're concentrating on ball contact and seeing where the ball, anticipating where the ball is going to land. So what she's going to do is back up, she's going to drop the hula hoop, and then she's going to get her defensive position and shoot it back to where the target is. So now, Excel family, I want to encourage you with something. You know, the word stay is something we're hearing a lot of these days, and that's not something that we're used to hearing. Stay at home, stay away from people, stay away from parks, don't go anywhere. But there's a, there's a really good song right now that's on the radio, and the name of it is God Stays. And I'll tell you what, God always stays with us. He's never, ever away from us. We are never, ever away from Him. So let me encourage you with this verse. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but this spring seems like it's been truly beautiful. Everything is like really bright green. All the flowers are absolutely beautiful. So if we're stopping and thinking about that for a minute, in Matthew, he talks about this. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field and the flowers of the field, which is here today and tomorrow it's thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith, so don't worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you. Excel family, we miss you like you wouldn't believe how we miss you. But we hope that you stay through this, that you know that God stays with you through this. And just be encouraged. We love you. Bye. Hi, my name is Allison Warren. I'm one of the volleyball coaches at West Henderson, and I've got a couple of drills for you today, and then I'm gonna end with a quick Bible verse. This first drill, I call it around the world passing. It's one that I typically start um, some of my practices with throughout the week. I don't do it every single day, um, but I do try to do it a couple times a week. I really like this drill because it's one where I can incorporate the whole team so I don't have a lot of kids standing on the side waiting for reps. Um, you can vary these numbers that I've kind of set aside here uh, to fit your team better. So if you have a smaller team, you could do it with fewer people. If you have a larger team, you can incorporate more um, players into it. Uh, for just demonstration purposes here, I've used uh, 16. So we've got four, 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 and four. Um, 
uh, the P's are designated passers and the S's are designated setters. So you split your group up into two groups. You've got your setters and your passers. Setters, the squiggly line here is the net. Setters are gonna go back to the net. So you've got four on each side. And then you're going to line up a passer directly in front of each setter. Um, the way that the drill is gonna go is when I say go, the passers are going to run up just shy of the 10 foot line, um, directly in front of the setter that they are lined up in front of. The setter will toss the passer a ball, the passer will pass right back to the setter, and the setter will catch the ball just above their head and stationary set until the next player comes. So the pattern will look like this, passer runs up, passes the ball directly back to the setter, setter stationary sets. The passer then will, and you pick this movement pattern, typically I'm gonna do sprint back to the inline or a back pedal back to the inline. Passer will then get back to the inline, touch the inline and go to the very next person. Once they get here, setter passes the, or tosses the ball, passer passes back up, and then again, back with the movement. So we'll just say um, sprints back to the inline. So they sprint back, touch the inline, run up, pass the ball, sprint back, touch the inline, run up, pass the ball, so on and so on. Um, the only part it gets tricky is right here at this end, instead of sprinting back to the corner, we're gonna go ahead and just run around to the other side of the court where we will then do the exact same pattern that we've just been doing. Um, and it continues and it's gonna make a little circle. Uh, meanwhile, the setter, after the ball is passed back to them, it's a stationary overhand set just to themselves, a quick little controlled set. They don't need to have a whole lot of movement here. We want to make sure the passer is passing the ball not too tight to the net and not making that setter move too much. Once the setter hears the next player coming, and what I do with my kids is I make them use uh, their voices during this drill. It takes a lot of communication, so we'll just say that this player is uh, Susie. So as I'm coming around here, when I get into position and I'm ready to run up, I'm yelling, Susie, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. She tosses the ball, that's when I pass back, and I go on to the next one. We'll say Jennifer, whoever, and you're calling that person's name to let them know that they are that you are there ready for their toss. Um, the setter should be focused on setting the ball, so it just kind of helps that communication there, and the setter doesn't release the ball too early before the passer is ready to make that pass. The whole goal with this, um, for my team, I set a goal to make two rounds. So they're gonna make two complete circles, um, passing a ball from each setter to, to make it a successful um, uh, circle. Once they've made two circles, I time the entire drill um, and it kind of gives them a marking point to set by and then we try to decrease that time throughout the season or each time that we do it. Um, you can also compete the two groups against one another if you're looking for that competition um, amongst your practices. So you can go group one versus group two, but I really like it because it's a drill where the um, team is forced to work together and to communicate um, while also working on skills, even though you may not be a passer or you may not be a setter, these are vital skills that everyone should be able to do on your team. Um, it's also one, I have this P circled. What I typically do is I pick one player uh, for the moving team, so we'll say the passing team, um, to be the really vocal person. So like I said, we're all communicating, we're all talking, but this particular person is letting her teammates know when they've completed one full lap, um, how close they are to completing the goal, which is the two full laps without a ball dropping. Um, and they're just kind of that loud extra person that's gonna keep everybody in track. It's easy to make it the loudest person in your team, but sometimes I'll make it the shy person that I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting some communication out of. So putting them into that leadership role. Um, and the last thing with mine, I make it really particular, the ball can't drop. So if any at any point the ball drops, um, if there's miscommunication, if the passer doesn't pass well, if the setter kind of fumbles the ball while setting to themselves, anytime a ball drops, they start over. So as you can see, it can be a little bit time consuming, um, but it's again, great for communication, great for just those basic skill repetitions, um, and then a good goal setting one where you can see improvement. The second drill that I have, um, I think we all kind of start with ball control at the beginning of our practices, but instead of it just being a simple pass back and forth, set back and forth, progressively going up into a pepper situation, I try to incorporate movement um, and then just really hone in on that specific ball control. We do this every single day. By the end of the season, I swear, I think my girls can do it with their eyes closed. Um, but we're going to start with those quick reps, your 50 passes, 50 uh, sets, whatever you want to do. But then we go into some combination skills. So passing to myself, then passing to a partner, passing to self, setting to a partner, uh, pass to yourself, back pass to your partner, 
set to yourself, set to your partner, set to yourself, turn around and back pass to your partner, set to yourself, and then back set to your partner. And then to take it one step further, I'm going to pass to myself, then I'm going to pass to, the, to my partner as the ball goes from me to them. I then do a burpee. I get back up and I'm in ready position by the time the ball's coming back towards me. Um, and as you can go down, you can see I've just aligned a different um, like exercise skill to go with the combination um, ball control. It's Again, something requires a lot of communication and it requires you to move really quick. You gotta get up, do that burpee, get back up in position and be ready to go. Um, maybe I fumbled a little bit, got stuck while doing my mountain climbers, then I'm gonna have to talk to my person and tell them you know, to set that ball really high and give me time. If the ball drops during this, they have wall touches, which is just run down, touch one wall, run back, touch the other wall, get back into um, a position with your partner and try to go again. I do each of these skills for one minute. So we're gonna to pass to ourselves, pass to our partner for one minute while doing a burpee. After that minute, we go to the next one. And like I said, if they drop the ball, it's a quick touch one wall, touch the other, get back, get focused, and try to get back in routine with your partner. Um, it's just kind of, I find it to be a little bit more competitive and, um, and a little, require a bit more focus than your typical peppering type warm up. So it's, like I said, just a minute each. So we're talking six minutes right at the beginning of practice. All right, and lastly, the um, Bible verse that I chose, I think it's one that can be applied to all elements of life. The time that we're going through and struggling with just our work and school schedules, with athletics, with um, not just being able to go out normally and shop or go to the grocery store or whatever you would normally do in your spare time. But it can also be applied to um, coaches and it can be applied to our athletes. It's just Psalm 16, 8. I keep the Lord in mind always because he is at my right hand and I will not be shaken. So whatever our trials and tribulations can't be shaken. We've got to just have faith and know that the Lord has us. Um, it can be applied. Coaches, we got to be there and be there for our athletes and not get shaken when we're in a, those tough situations. And then athletes, you know, the pressure pressure situations that you can sometimes get in. So I just think it's a, a great verse that can be applicable to all things in life. So, all right. Hi. Uh, the drill that I'm going to share with y'all today is one that I've used for a lot of years and with a lot of teams, um, and I really love it, so I hope it'll help you. The name of it is called Dig or Die, and it is a game-like situation where you set up your teams um, on one net, and you can do four-on-four, five-on-five, six-on-six, whatever works for you. Um, I think it is best if it's six on six, but sometimes you just don't have those numbers. But anyway, it works on communication. It helps your teams learn how to see the court and see holes, see where there's um, the defense isn't covering. And um, of course it is a game of pursuit and effort and just brings out the, um, the best in your athletes. So, um, what I do is I set my teams up and then I free ball in from the side. And once you get the game going, the free ball goes to the team that won the last point. Um, you can play for time or you can play for points. I usually play to 10. And um, the, uh, you know, the, there's, you could also give your team something called magical points if the coach feels like the team is being exceptionally loud or just doing a really good job encouraging each other and it's you know something you you can take note of um anyway so to start the game you um you free ball it in and then after the fr free ball the teams just play out that point now if it's just a played out point and um you know one team wins the point then that's what you do you just keep score but the whole point of this game is that you are trying to touch the ball. So you don't want the other team to touch the ball. So you try to find a spot where they're not at or something they're not covering and hit the ball there. If that happens and the other team does not touch the ball at least once on their side, they lose all their points. So the score can be like nine to two and I'm hitting the ball over and um, uh, I hit it and hit the floor, nobody touches it. And it can be a simple, you know, touch on a block. It can be a, a touch where you're just 
throwing yourself out for a dig and you barely grazes you, if it touches you at all, it just counts as you lose a point. But if you don't touch it at all, your team loses all their points. So, um, like I said, if you are the two side and you're playing a, a team that has nine points, of course you really have to get that next point. So you want to try to hit the ball where they're not at or take it over on two or whatever your strategy is. And you, uh, if you get it over and you put it and they don't touch it, they go to zero. So it then becomes three to zero. So it's really a competitive game. The kids love it. I love it. I've used it for years and um, it really brings out the best in your athletes and it makes them just throw themselves out there and go for stuff that you never thought they would pull up and they actually get it up. So it makes for some fabulous digs and some really good um, momentum builders and um, just helps your team have confidence that they can play up any ball. So I hope hope that's something you can use. Um, if uh, you really want to bring out the best in your kids, this is the drill for you. So my favorite um, Bible verse that I use a lot with coaching is 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. And it's watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, that all that you do be done in love. Thank y'all. Have a good day. Hey guys, so I'm going to share with you one of my favorite volleyball drills and Bible verses and then how it pertains to life and coaching and whatnot. So this drill I have up here, every volleyball player knows. We run it all the time. It's one of my favorites, but it's one of the least favorite of the girls. It's just plain old serve receive. Three back row, opposite side servers and they're just one-on-one -on -one with the ball. They have to communicate with each other and get 20 to target in a timed amount. So this focuses on communication, repetition, which leads to discipline. But my favorite thing that it works on is overcoming mistakes mentally. So it's a huge mental game, huge part of the game. And I've had every single girl I've ever worked with at least one day in their life, they just can't pass the ball and serve receive. They could be the best passer on the team, but at one point or another, they just can't do it. So I love this drill. It teaches you just how to become mentally tough. They've done it a thousand times, but they have a bad day. They have to overcome it. They have to get over it for the team. Okay, and then one of my favorite Bible verses is Galatians 6, 9. It says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So to me, that means that at all times we have to act the way we need to act, do, do the proper training, do the proper techniques, everything, and you shouldn't just do it when people are watching you, because God is always watching you, and don't just assume that you're going to reap the benefit as soon as you're, you're working really hard, so automatically in that next game, that, that's going to be your game. It comes in God's timing and not on our timing, so we have to learn that we have to rely on him and not our own powers because relying on ourselves and not giving glory and credit to God where it should be and not acting right that just leads to destruction hey everyone hey everyone it's Molly Hill from Polk County High School volleyball the drill that I'm going to be talking to you today about is called around the world um, I brought it from my college coach who introduced it to me my senior year and um, I just really like it it's a conditioning drill um, so it's really good for like beginning of the season preseason type situation it's tough and it will definitely get your girls working thinking and communicating which is what I'm all about um, so my drawing here is kind of confusing but I promise I'll explain it basically you've got the perimeter here of the court um, your baselines okay the net squiggly line is the net these little dash marks across are the 10 foot line okay then I have it set up where you have six people at the net three on each side um, and then three people on each baseline if you have a large team you can do as many as you want across the net as long as every single person has a partner at the baseline all right so it's called around the world because you're gonna try to make it around the net as many times as the coach says I typically do three to five laps 
around the net um, with the partner that you started with. But, uh, you know, if you want to be really tough, you can do seven, eight, sometimes ten. Um, I remember college days where we had to do that many. So um, totally up to you, your judgment, and what you think your team needs. Basically, the coach blows a whistle, says go. Um, partners at the baseline will then shuffle forward to the partner in front of them and receive a tossed ball right here at the 10-foot line. They are to platform pass the ball back to partner at the net. Um, it's a good controlled pass. You're working on shuffling footwork, being low, um, being consistent, and getting here, being stopped when you make contact with the ball, and um, keeping that good level platform, giving a good high controlled pass, talking to the partner, hey, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I got it, I got it, making sure we're talking, we're communicating. Um, once the pass is made, it's high, it's effective, partner at the net then has to catch it high over their forehead like a setter and begin setting it to themselves, just straight up and down, good and controlled, good hands, um, good footwork again, okay? Passer will then run back to the next position and continue what they were just doing. Shuffle forward, receive the pass. Okay, it's a good high controlled pass. Partner at the net is still setting it back and forth. Because they are setting it back and forth, when the new partner comes and is ready, again, hey, 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 I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, maybe even calls out this partner's name. This partner will set the ball to them. That's really important. It's not a toss up anymore. Once that first ball is done, it becomes a set just makes it way harder and it makes it um, more kind of challenging and uh, requires more control, which is something that you need in the game of volleyball. Again, the pattern continues and the players will go around for however many laps the coach says. You can also switch it. Um, here I have the players going deep to short, but you can make them start at the 10 foot line and shuffle back, receive a deep ball and then run and start short, go back, run forward, shuffle back, receive the deep ball, run forward, shuffle back. So you can also switch it up. Um, it's way harder to do it that way because it's a lot more difficult to pass a controlled pass from back here all the way up than just from right here all the way up. So I would definitely start with this model and then maybe as the season goes on and your team gets better and you know you've been working on it, switch it up and try short to deep. Um, just makes it a lot harder to pass a deep ball that's controlled. And also it makes it a lot harder on the X's at the net to try to set a ball all the way to the baseline. So um, it's definitely a great drill, I recommend it. Um, the coach is observing with the whistle and if you see mess ups, a ball is shanked, a ball's over the net, somebody touches the net, maybe one of these X's at the net is not setting it to themselves, is not catching it high, then, um, you know, you blow the whistle and it's a start over. So um, you and your assistant coach can be observing with whistles and just making sure everybody's doing their job. I also challenge my baseline partners here to try to catch the person in front of them. You know, if you're shuffling and you're running and you've got the fast footwork, then take advantage of it and try to catch the person in front of you and, and make yourself better and also make your teammate better. So um, that's the drill. I love it. And it's called Around the World coming from Molly Hill at Polk County High School. Thanks, y'all guys it's molly hill again from polk county high school volleyball um the bible verse that i really try to think about and try to remind my athletes of um every chance i get is coming from joshua 1 9 it says have i not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be discouraged for the lord your god will be with you wherever you go um this is just something that you know i know a lot of athletes especially at a young age they get nervous they get anxious um especially if there's a lot of pressure on you it's a big game you know you have an expectation um a lot of things can happen so um you know i really just try to tell my athletes to be confident and be courageous and go out there and play the way that they know how and the way that they were taught and um to not let you know whoever their opponent may be get in their head and and make them suffer in a way that, that they don't deserve to. So, um, you know, at Polk, I tell my girls all the time, you got to play our style, our way. And um, I think that that kind of rings true in this Bible verse when it's telling you to be strong and be courageous. There's no reason to be discouraged. There's no reason to be anxious and nervous, um, especially for young athletes. You know, you guys 
always have so much pressure on you and um, you know that you, you feel like there's that expectation that I talked about earlier but really um, the one thing that matters is your relationship with the Lord and um, overall if you've got that right and you're living the right way then he's going to take care of you and he will always be with you wherever you go whether that's in the classroom on the court on the field um, in the car wherever you go you know you can trust that God will be with you. So that's just something that I think about as a coach that I thought about as a player. Um, and I try to, I try to have my athletes think about that. So, um, everybody have a good day. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed our virtual volleyball clinic. Special thank you to all the coaches and former players that contributed to make this such a wonderful event. It's just awesome to think about the most two powerful words on any campus in America are coach said, and we take that very seriously at Fellowship of Christian Athletes because we want coaches that teach kids those Christian values, those morals, those high standards to not only be a great athlete, but to be a great person once we're done working with them. So thank you very much. God bless.